Hello all, welcome to Let's Learn Optometry. In this video, we will see the anatomy of choroid. Choroid is the middle vascular layer of the eyeball. It lies between the sclera and the retina. It extends from the optic disc to the ora serrata. It is 0.25 mm thick at the posterior pole and 0.1 mm thick anteriorly. It is attached firmly to the sclera around the optic nerve and at the points of exit of the vortex veins. Layers of the choroid. It has three layers. The outer suprachoroidal lamina which lies adjacent to the sclera. The middle choroidal stroma which has blood vessels of varying sizes. And the inner Brooks membrane which separates the retina from the choroid. Let's see one by one in detail. First we will see the outermost layer that is the suprachoroidal lamina. Uh, it is a thin membrane of condensed collagen fibers, melanocytes and fibroblast. It is continuous anteriorly with the supraciliary laminar layer of the ciliary body. The potential space between this membrane and the sclera is called the suprachoroidal space which contains long and short posterior ciliary arteries and nerves. And this layer contains components from both the sclera and the choroidal stroma. So if the choroid separates from the sclera, a part of suprachoroid will adhere to the sclera and a part will remain attached to the choroid. Stroma of the choroid. It consists of loose collagenous tissue with some elastic and reticulum fibers. It also contains pigment cells and plasma cells. Its main bulk is formed by the vessels which are arranged in three layers. So from outside to inside, uh, the first layer is the layer of larger vessels which is called as hallus layer. The middle layer is the layer of medium vessels called as satellus layer and the innermost layer is the layer of choriocapillaries which nourishes the outer layer of the retina. So then comes the basal lamina or the Brooks membrane. Uh, it is the innermost layer of the choroid. It separates the RPA from the choriocapillaries. It runs from the optic nerve to the ora serrata where it undergoes some modifications before continuing into the ciliary body. It is about 7 microns thick. Microscopically it consists of 5 layers in it. Uh, RPE basement membrane, inner collagen layer, middle elastic layer, outer collagen layer and the choriocapillary basement membrane. So Brooks membrane is important for the blood retinal barrier function. Functions of the choroid. Uh, it provides oxygen and nutrients to the outer retina. As choroid is darkly pigmented, it absorbs excess light as does the RPE layer. The suprachoroidal space provides a pathway for the posterior vessels and nerves that supply the anterior segment. It helps in thermoregulation of the posterior eye. It helps in the drainage of aqueous humor. Blood supply. The choroid receives its main arterial supply from the following vessels, the long and short posterior ciliary arteries and the anterior ciliary arteries. Venous drainage. The venous blood from the iris, ciliary body and choroid is collected by the series of veins. These lead to four or more large vortex veins which is located behind the equator of the eyeball. Then the vortex vein drains into the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins which finally drains into the cavernous sinus. Nerve supply. The choroidal vessels are innervated by the autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic innervation is from the pterygopalatine ganglion which causes a nitrous oxide responsive vasodilation resulting in increased choroidal blood flow. The sympathetic innervation is from the superior cervical ganglion which causes vasoconstriction and decreased choroidal blood flow. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Let's Learn Optometry for more optometry and eye care videos.